beautiful babies. Uh, welcome to another updates news vlog. Today on the show is my co-host, Space Brain. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you, Space Brain. You're going to be around here a little bit more, right? Oh, be... I don't like too much attention, but maybe. Oh, okay. All right. Well, he's coy. We'll see. We're doing a test shoot today. Let him know in the comments below how you feel about him. Oh, no. Don't hold back. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> a lot of exciting movie news today. Oh, yeah. Tons of stuff. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Well, let's dive right in. Uh, we're going to start with the Thor Ragnarok trailer. Uh, I watched it. I didn't watch it the day it came out, but I watched it. I watched it today. Oh, man. What did you think? Well, I I was actually really excited. It, it just has a lot of elements that speak to me personally. Uh, first of all, I love the director, Taiki Waikidi. No, Taiki, Taika, Taika Waititi. I always fuck that up. It's a hard one. Taika Waititi, I love this director. He's from New Zealand. He's got that really weird, quirky New Zealand sense of humor that really appeals to my sensibilities. He made What We Do in the Shadows, which is an amazing film. It's really funny if you haven't seen it. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, so good. So I heard that, you know, this is his first big film. You know, he's worked with a lot smaller budgets. But I love his sense of humor, and I think that, like, that's what he's going to be bringing to this from this trailer, is I can kind of see his weird sense of humor in this, especially in that ending of the trailer where you finally see Gladiator Hulk come out, and then, you know, Gladiator Thor is like, oh, he's a friend from work, you know, that was really, like, that's, that's Taika Waititi comedy, you know, that's funny. Like, he, he makes, like, the mundane things funny, and it's funny that, you know, it's funny that Thor's mundane job is being an Avenger, you know, and this is just some asshole from work, you know, <laughs> like it's totally chill. So that was really cute. Although I did not like seeing Thor's hair get cut off. I will say mm. that that was a strike against. That, I, that's my one strike against. Um, now I have a question. Who is this new villain in the Thor trailer? Can you tell me about her? Okay. Let's talk about Hela for just a quick second, okay? So you have Asgard, and they have all this Norse mythology, and Hela, in the Marvel Norse Asgardian mythology, is the queen of hell, which is one of the nine realms where uh, souls go, you know. Not all the souls, I think some of them are in Valhalla. I don't know exactly how it works in the MCU either. She's the queen of hell, and she's played by Kate Blanchett. I love Kate Blanchett. I really think that she's really beautiful, and I envy her skin, and I just love her all over. So to see her show up, in an awesome Hela outfit, and she's the first Marvel villainess, and it's Kate Blanchett as a death goddess. That really speaks to me in particular. That's exciting. Now, you don't normally get this excited about movie trailers. What's different about this one? <sighs> That's true, Space Brain. Like, you really can't trust a trailer. It might be mediocre, you know, it might be another mediocre Thor films because the Thor films have been mediocre, in my opinion. I have not, like, I don't own any of them on Blu-ray. So this could be, this has the potential to be the first Thor movie that I'm, like, super fucking excited about. But I'm not gonna get completely, you know me, I try not to get on the hype train. But I did get a little bit of tingles when I watched this trailer, and I hate to admit that. It's game over. Like, you've got all the, you got Kate Blanchett, you got Jeff Goldblum, you got Taika Waititi. I'm in. Like, you got Thor, you got Gladiator Hulk. I'm good. Like, let's do it. Like, done. I'm in. So, I'm looking forward to Thor Ragnarok, and I'm really excited about this villainous. I'm so excited about Hela. The Marvel MCU, like, the weakest link in pretty much every Marvel movie is the fact that their villains are not very strong. Okay, unless you're talking about like Kingpin and uh, and the Purple Man on Netflix, those are strong villains. But those are the those are the strongest Marvel villains out of all the Marvel properties. So I'm really excited to see. Uh, I think Kate Blanchett has what it takes to be a real awesome villain, and I don't think she would have taken this role if it sucked. You know what I'm saying? Although she did take that role in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and she was a villainous in that one. Yeah. And uh, that movie was terrible. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe she, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, that kind of throws out your whole argument. It does. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It's a new year. Maybe she's learned from her mistakes in the past. 
Now, I think that this new third Thor movie is interesting because I think that they're on to a new formula this time around, combining other characters from the Marvel Universe, such as Hulk. And I heard that Doctor Strange might be making an appearance. You're right. I've heard that, too, that Doctor Strange is going to show up in this. Because Thor showed up at the end of the Doctor Strange movie, and they were like, oh, we're going to have to do something. And then, so maybe he pops up. But he wasn't in the trailer. I didn't see him in the trailer, so. Oh, you're right. Did they say we have to do something about Hulk in the end of that? Was that what it was? I don't remember. It's just so much has happened to me. <laughs> that was such a sad, so much has happened to me. Like, so much emotion on your face. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> it just slipped out. <laughs> Let one slip there. <laughs> you. I'm fine. I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Um, <laughs> World War Three is getting ready to start. Or the Thor trailer, whatever. It's fine. It's fucking fine. Ugh. It's fine. Okay, new top story. In the Deadpool 2 movie, they have cast Cable, and they have officially announced that it will be played by... Josh Brolin. Ah, now Josh I know this Brolin. has been going on for a long time. I think this is the the biggest casting controversy of any comic book movie that I've heard of since I've been on this planet. Is this a controversy? Well, a lot of people were debating heavily whether it should be one of like ten different people. You know, Josh Brolin. He's just gonna take all the checks he can get. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, whatever. Yeah. F fucking who cares? You know. All right. And then a lot of people are saying that. It's weird that Josh Brolin is playing Cable because he's also playing the voice of Thanos in the Avengers movies. Yeah. What do you have think about that? Do you think that'll be a problem? <laughs> he might sound like the same character. I don't care. Unless he can throw his voice. Uh, I just don't care. It's You know what? It's fine. Sure. I'll allow it. Got bigger things. Bigger fish to fry. So you don't think this is a problem? <laughs> I just don't care. This is BS movie news. You have to care. <laughs> well, it's ephemeral. I mean, it's like, okay, great. He's fucking cable. Sure, why not? Okay. Josh Brolin. Okay. There's a lot of people that have played in a DC universe and in a Marvel universe. And there's also been people now who, I mean, it's all Marvel. So he's playing two characters in the Marvel universe. Which one is just a voice. I don't know. Who cares? Sure. It's Josh Brolin. Okay, well... Glad we solved that. Yeah, yeah, it's oof, weight off my mind. <laughs> uh, first of all, let's touch base on Ghost in the Shell. It bombed. It's official bomb. Mm. And Paramount has come out saying that they believe that the whitewashing controversy is it has really hurt the box office, and that's why it didn't do well. It's because the whitewashing controversy, because people didn't want to see white girl Scarlett Johansson the main character people felt she should have been Japanese but you know what the real problem with the movie was it was that it sucked <laughs> that was the problem okay don't blame Asian whitewashing controversies for your shitty movie okay like just stop Paramount like it's your fault well don't you think it's possible that because they cast a white person that the authentic fans of Ghost in the Shell weren't as excited as they would have been, and thus the buzz didn't generate that was needed to get people excited to go see a movie that most people don't know much about the title from. I don't know. I just, I think it sucked, and everyone heard about it, that it sucked, and then no one went. So I really don't... I mean, it, it didn't help anything. I'm not, I'm not going to say it, it... It hurt a little bit, I'm sure. It played into it. It was a factor. But you can't say that that was the overriding factor. So what you're saying is if the movie had been good anyway... It probably wouldn't have mattered. Yes. That's what I'm saying. If you had a good movie, then you would have not had a bomb at the box office is what I'm saying. So tell me about your big-headed, bobble-headed figures. What do you have here? Oh, wow. Well, these are my pops. My Funko vinyl pops. And, you know, I have really kept myself, I don't buy a lot of these, okay? I tr this is like, I'm trying to actually finish my collection and I only want to have six in my place. Cause you know, 
I don't know, my grandfather, he was kind of a hoarder. I have that gene a little bit and like, I can't let it go crazy. And I already have enough crap. I don't need to buy fucking all these fucking stupid toys, right? But <laughs> I do like them a lot. And I had a few of them. And so what I've done is on the top of my bookshelf in my, in my place, I, uh, I have these two guys on the right um, and they are my evil wizards. So these represent like my masculine side. So these guys are like evil wizards. You have David Lopan from Big Trouble in Little China and you have Voldemort, you know, Harry Potter. And then on the other side, we've got my strong, tough females. So we have Daenerys and we have Julie Newmar, Catwoman. And then I wanted to do a middle path, like a more androgynous, less volatile personalities for the center. And so we have Professor X who's a bald man and he's a teacher and he's like super chill. But I'm gonna finish this off with the ancient one, another bald, but a bald woman. So we have a bald man and a bald woman and they're gonna be the middle path. And then these guys are gonna be on the sides. But also I will say this, I'm waiting for Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman. I'm not a big fan of Julie Newmore Catwoman. I mean, I like Julie Newmore Catwoman, but I did, I did go to the pop store and I did get a better Catwoman. He talked me into a better Catwoman. So until Selena Kyle comes out from like Batman, like Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman, I'm gonna have to do this. So we're gonna do, we're gonna unbox these. I don't know why people watch unboxing videos. Like what is, can you guys let me know in the comments below what the fucking point of it is? It's a box. Yet you're making an unboxing video right now? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh, and there it is, you just unboxed it. Wow. <laughs> Look, and they got, they both have bobbly heads, you know? So, and they're both from Marvel, which I do feel, I wish there was another bald female teacher type person, but Tilda Swinton is bomb. And like, I love Tilda Swinton. So I'm fucking in for Tilda Swinton. And this one, this is a collector's series. I paid a little extra for her, but you shouldn't take collector's shit out of the box, but I don't care. Cause I'm not here to collect shit and fucking think I'm gonna make money off this shit later. So. Instead, we have like original, one of the original Catwoman outfits from the comics where she's wearing this really crazy green and purple outfit and she's got a whip and it's super hot. So I like that Daenerys has a dragon and she has a whip. So this Catwoman is much better than the Julie Newmar one. So now my pop collection is complete. Let me know what you think. Do you divide your pops by personalities? How do you divide your pops on your bookshelf? <laughs> Are you a fucking loser and you buy these stupid things too? Fucking plastic. I saw Elvira the other day. I really wanted her, but I was like, no. Stop. What's your fucking problem? <laughs> so this might sound like a rude question, but obviously I'm not from Earth. Um, this seems like a strange human tradition and I'm not quite sure what is the appeal of these weird giant headed action figure characters. Um... Why do people want these? Well, I can explain that aesthetically speaking, like babies, the, you have a big head to body ratio. We're programmed to love that ratio. Like we're like genetically programmed to like things with big heads and little bodies. Oh. So aesthetically, that's why I think pops, because they look like babies. Oh, <laughs> that scientifically makes sense to me. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I actually knew the answer to that question. <laughs> I've loved chibis for a long time. I love chibis, like chibis, Originally, I came in contact with chibis uh, through Japan. Japan Japan started the chibi thing where they have like a cool character, but then they also draw them as these little teeny big headed characters that are really cute and simple. So I've drawn a lot of chibis in my life. I really enjoy drawing big headed characters myself. I have my own style of big headed character that I draw. And oh my gosh, the best, my favorite news of the night is all about how since our last episode, we kicked off our pre-sale for our Dune box in preparation for Dune Club this summer, where we're gonna read Dune together over 12 weeks. Uh, I had really low expectations for how many people were gonna show up for this, and you guys knocked it out of the park, okay? Like, you guys are overwhelming me with how much you guys are super excited about Dune Club. Uh, so I'm like really excited. Uh, what you get in your Dune box, and again, it's gonna look a little different than this, but you're gonna get, a signed copy of Dune, and then we've got a bookmark in here with me as a Dune worm, Leto. You, you're not going to meet him in this book. He's a couple books later, but 
And then you're gonna have a spice necklace that you can leave on as a tassel. And there'll be an Atreides pin that I have designed also be in there so you can put it on your fucking coat or your hat or whatever you wanna do. And yeah, and you don't have to buy the Dune box to be a part of Dune Club though. You know, I wanna make this free for everybody. A lot of you already have your editions of Dune. The only thing that I will say is that this particular edition is the one you should be reading from because there are no chapter numbers in Dune. Okay, there's no chapter numbers in this bitch, okay? So I can't tell you read chapter one through chapter four unless you wanna go through and number them all yourself. And like, there's a lot of chapters, okay? Like, you don't wanna do that. So what I've done is I have page numbers that I need you to read from. So you can still figure it out. I mean, we'll figure it out, but it's easier if you do it with this edition. So, but I've had some people asking me, oh, I wanna read it in Spanish. Go ahead, get, get one in Spanish, get one in whatever language you wanna read from. The page numbers may not figure, you know, you're, I'll tell you chapter numbers, but they're not, it's not in the book. You're gonna have to fucking number these chapters yourself. So, it's a peculiar oddity of this book. Is the Dune Box available for international people? Why, yes it is. The, <laughs> why, yes it is. The Dune Box is absolutely for my international peeps. Uh, you guys are totally, you can get one, get on the train, get on that Dune hype train. Leaving the fucking station, you know what I'm saying? It's going pretty great. So I'm excited. Thank you guys. Like, thank you to everybody who has participated, who has bought a Dune box pre sale. You guys are amazing, and I fucking cannot wait to get into Dune Club this summer. Actually, next week, we're gonna be talking about Fate of the Furious. I couldn't be more excited. It's my favorite garbage movie. <laughs> I love those garbage movies. I'm not usually, I'm not into a lot of garbage movies, but this franchise is the best. Mm. So we can expect a real episode? Yes, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a real one. Not one of these do. bullshit movie newses. No. <laughs> it's going to be on the other set. Okay. On the fancy set. Uh, if you liked this video, be sure to thumbs it up. If you like this channel, you should subscribe to it. And then there's a little bell that you have to press. And then, like, it'll let you know when new videos come out. It's a whole thing. And you can also follow me on Instagram if you want to see what fire memes, my favorite memes of the day. I post a few of those every day. And then on Twitter, I'm sassy to people a lot. And I answer a lot of questions. So you can follow me on those as well. Have a good night. <laughs> You've had a very strange rhythm today. I know. This is full moon or something. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, that shit affects the, you know, we're 70% water. <laughs> the tides, it moves the oceans. I mean, what is it doing to us? <laughs> Mostly made of water. Big water balloon talks. <laughs>